Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, uh, let's talk about a very interesting topic. What actual consumers want in smartphones and I just hope brands listen. In fact, actually I had tweeted about this in December and that tweet got a lot of uh, traction. As you can see, it got a lot of publicity. In fact, a lot of popular brands like Samsung, Apple, uh, Geo, others, etc. also replied uh, to the tweet uh, with some of the answers. But again, they didn't try to address the most important questions so in this video I have took a bunch of questions the most common ones and I'll try to answer them uh, because I've been in this industry for the last 12 years and I know both the sides the what do you say consumers actually what they want and what brands how they work so hopefully uh, I'll try to answer some of the questions and I feel in a lot of areas brands can actually improve uh, thereby overall improving the consumer experience and, and in the long run yes it might be difficult right now it helps the brand so let's talk about this so okay guys let's start this and the first question is very interesting and very controversial would love to know what do you feel about it but here it goes this is by Mehul he says all UIs with ads should start monthly charges some nominal charge like rupees 50 or 80 to get ad free experience who won't pay will be seeing ads so yes we are seeing a lot of uh, smartphones uh, uh, in the mid range and uh, uh, what do you say from BBK group and others uh, that have actually ads or bloatware bundled so According to Mehul, uh, will you be okay paying a subscription fee like let's say 50 rupees, 80 rupees to get rid of ads in a particular smartphone? Uh, this is a very interesting, I, I never thought that a user would say that he'll be willing to pay some money, a subscription or something to get rid of ads. But would love to know what do you feel about this? I am personally mixed in this feeling uh, because once it starts, uh, then uh, maybe yeah today the subscription will be like let's say they might start with 50 60 rupees but eventually uh, it might increase so i'm a little bit skeptical but would love to know what do you feel about this what mehul is saying uh, can be a viable option i'm mixed in this one okay moving to the next one and i've got similar question this is from suman lack of popul, uh, proper call recording in phones plus lack of doing payments in watches what's the point of buying the LTE watches okay two part question let me address the first one and this one I got from a lot of people this is regarding uh, call recording and this is actually if you noticed with the Google dialer yes technically you can actually do it Google dialer is now uh, being bundled with almost 90% of the Android smartphone except Samsung uh, and I guess in the call recording is there but it announces that is something many of you are annoyed would like to know from you guys uh, what do you uh, feel about this uh, should uh, actually Google allow other vendors also to install their own dialers and have call recording options and stuff like uh, that and I feel Google should not be that strict because what uh, I have noticed is that with Google dialer uh, we have having a lot of proximity sensor issues and other stuff and a lot of Android smartphones and once you change the dialer to a, another dialer in fact about two weeks ago I made a video about it uh, that thing gets solved so yes I think so uh, that can be an option but again regarding call uh, recording I am like little bit uh, what do you say because I, I feel it's slightly unethical because if you're doing a call recording uh, the other party should know that's personally me uh, but yeah what do you feel about that second part of the questions is regarding the smartwatches he's selling uh, lack of uh, doing payments uh, with the smartwatches what's the point of buying LTE watches yes this is a thing that is happening in, in India specifically the watches the Apple watch this is the Samsung watch etc all support uh, paying uh, uh, via the watches but but in India, as of now, it's not allowed. And I think so. These, it's a high time these vendors, actually very big vendors like Apple, Samsung, work with the Indian government and try to enable it because this is enabled in a lot of other countries. So I think so. Brands should proactively work with the Indian government. What are the bottlenecks? What are they feeling as there? Why is the Indian government unsecure about it? Why don't they allow it? So I think so. It's the brand they have to work with the government and um, uh, also enable some of the other features that these advanced smartwatches uh, support like BP, etc. and all those things. So yeah. Uh, next question. This is from uh, Dembe. Uh, the OS optimization is still not good enough. The UI still stutters here and there and glitches out no matter who the manufacturer is. Dembe, yes, this is happening a lot in the past one and a half years. Many brands just released uh, a smartphone and yes, uh, it is having some glitches and stuff. Sometimes they do fix it with later OT update, but again, I do not like the trend. And this is happening a lot with the mid-range Android smartphones. And uh, 
it has been particularly in the past one and a half years it's become a very bad habit of some of the brands every month they just keep launching one phone after the other if you're launching so many smartphones in a particular price band maybe in the price band of 5000 they might launch three or four uh, uh, what do you say models uh, one after the other if you're launching so many models uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to optimize those smartphones so i hope this actually falls and here i would say uh, kudos to the nothing phone uh, when it was launched and now what it is it's a huge difference in fact they improved it quite a bit with software update so that is how the experience should be but sadly with a lot of chinese oems they keep launching one phone after the other after 30 days 40 days and yes i understand so it's high time actually consumers also just pay attention okay this particular brand is going to launch 15 20 phones so you have to think will they spend that much time if they're launching so many models will they update it will they fix the bugs optimize it so again it's up to us as consumers because <coughs> we have been buying uh, smartphones left and right with brands that launch every new model after 2025 days okay next thing is uh, this is a very interesting question uh, so let me just take it and uh, this is by anuj uh, it's a two part question <coughs> make installation process for custom rom as easy as installing an app from play store so that non techies can use it i as a power user uh yes i would say this can be a nice option but again it's a double edged sword so frankly speaking i would say uh brands will not do it i'm looking at uh, from the brands point of view because if they do that many users who are not that tech savvy will do it and they can break their devices and again it will be a nightmare uh, for the smartphone brand with the service department or all those things so yes i like what you're talking as a power user i also want it but i don't think so that will happen anytime so second uh, question is a uh, full backup including system file so that users can restore a working version in case of something goes wrong yes this actually should be done in fact uh, i would say uh google should actually uh get into this and provide it within the android uh, operating system uh, something like a full backup solution yes you can uh, do the backup connect it to your computer and dump that backup on your computer and in case anything happens because these days we are noticing bad ot updates and stuff user should be able to actually restore it with that whatever uh, backup he has done so definitely this can be done and i think so google has as the android operating system maker should actually do this initiative and if they do it it will be a great boon i would say next question this is from neo uh, again he says always on display which is always on like samsung or uh, realme phone but but uh, but moto and realme uh, sucks at this basic feature and a properly calibrated and reliable auto brightness feature regarding the auto brightness uh, i would say the situation has improved a lot i would say uh, compared to smartphones that i was seeing earlier last year i didn't find a lot of what do you say uh, smartphones that had very bad auto brightness calibration so i think so that is improved but yeah the second thing specifically for moto and yes as you said real uh, redmi uh, they have this always on but it's uh, uh, redmi has a thing called always but it's not true always on like what samsung and other does and And Moto has that Moto display, so yes, I get the point of Moto display. What Motorola is trying to do, but I think so as a company, why can't you uh, give an option of always proper on that is always on? Yes, it will drain the battery a little bit. Give it in a bracket warning. If you enable this feature, it will consume a lot more uh, battery life. But as a brand, uh, I feel. they should give that option to the user so i hope motorola and uh, redmi actually enable this feature in future uh, phones or with the software update they can actually do it okay the next question is from the reservation chacha uh, he is asking 3.5 mm headphone jack you know it will not going to come back in flagships the reason is that most of the established smartphone brand bigger ones have their tws and it's a big business so i don't think so at least in the premium range we will see 3.5 mm headphone jack back from the likes of samsung apple etc okay second thing is universal charging standard and user replaceable battery universal charging standard yes i feel this should be implemented and government should get into this and we have a standard that is known as power delivery in fact with power delivery charges you can charge laptops even smartphones and stuff for example right now you can't see uh, if i bring it uh, okay see this is my macbook pro uh, uh, it's connected right now to the monitor so i'm not bringing it. but this is being charged with the smartphone's charger that is the motorola h30 ultra which is actually a 
PD charger and this MacBook Pro 16 inch uh, is supporting PD charging. So you have actually a standard and I think so more companies should actually start pushing this power delivery standard instead of having their own like Vogue, this and that. Uh, I would say BBK Group is uh, the worst in this because they have their own proprietary stuff and they keep introducing new stuff. But power delivery is a big standard uh, and I think so uh, at least in the higher end uh, range phones I've seen last year many of the vendors are actually supporting Motorola is doing Samsung is doing, uh, uh, Redmi is going to uh, 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 good ex Xiaomi phones, uh, uh, many of them do support it. So yes, it's becoming, but again, it's not like everyone does that. So I hope uh, most of them will st start supporting power delivery as a charging standard because most of the modern new laptops do support power delivery uh, charging and you can actually charge uh, your laptop with that. For example, uh, this is my other location and I don't have the regular MacBook Pro uh, charger here. It's in my house, but I uh, safely charge it without any issues with the uh, Motorola H30 Ultras charger, which because it's a power delivery charger with uh, actually a gain charger. So again, one charger. Uh, to charge your smartphone, laptop and stuff. That's a very big uh, thing. And I think so most, uh, there are some vendors that don't do it properly support or if they support power delivery, uh, they will restrict it so much that it charges only at 30 watts or something, not the full power. But I hope uh, this other vendors that are not doing it properly uh, enable it. Replaceable battery. Yes, it's a nice thing. I feel it can come back. It's not, uh, what do you say, impossible but frankly speaking i don't think so this is going to come back because many of the smartphone vendors are now uh, supporting that faster charging like 67 watt 120 watts and stuff like that and for that actually the battery is split into two so that will make it a little bit more uh, difficult for making user replaceable uh, batteries and stuff so frankly speaking i don't think so that will come back at least in the higher end but in the budget or mid-range smartphones they can actually do it because generally they don't have that split battery and stuff like that anyways moving to the next one okay uh, this is a touchy question but uh, let's uh, and i have very strong thoughts about this because i have been uh, harping about this from the past one and a half years this is happening in the industry uh, this is by uh, chandan he says software should not break your devices and don't give uh, lines on screens uh, that is many of the amlet screens after ot updates the screens were getting damaged you're getting lines and stuff that actually happening a lot of brands samsung had it xiaomi had it uh, oneplus had it almost all the brands except moto um, and many users uh, poco etc has he studied and this has started happening in the past one and a half years and i think so this is really really bad this is sort of unethical uh, and it is happening generally after the warranty expires. So many users are compelled to buy, um, actually you have to replace the entire screen. And uh, some brands are giving discount, but some are not giving discounts on that. Some have acknowledged the problem for some specific models. So they are replacing it for free, but many of them are not doing it. And you have to pay uh, to replace the AMOLED screen, which cost a lot. And I think so here, uh, actually Indian government should step in if a smartphone with the, after the OTA updates uh, gets, uh, uh, the hardware gets uh, tampered, uh, destroyed or some problems arises after the OTA update, uh, then the brand should be uh, liable. I think so. In India, we simply do not have that uh, strong consumer laws like in Europe. Uh, so I think so Indian government should step in this because brands are not listening uh, uh, to this and this is continuing again and again and it's happening a lot now in the past one and a half years. It has become so bad that uh, uh, it's uh, I just lost faith in a lot of Android OEMs because of this. The screens were uh, getting bad left and right. So I think so it's high time Indian government comes and gives some regulations. Once they do that, then these brands will be very, very careful. If the brand is liable, it is like that. You give your car to servicing and they destroy your car. Will you just shut up? No. The same thing is happening with OT updates with smartphones. So that's my frank opinion. It might be an unpopular one, but I think so. Uh, it's high time now government comes in Indian governments and has some better consumer level protections uh, I feel because other developed uh, develop countries like Europe and stuff have that they protect their consumers if something like this happens. Okay this is by uh, uh, Srinivas. Uh, unins uninstallable software out of the box, invasive ads by the manufacturer on lock screen uh, etc like Samsung and Redmi, horrible bloatware by the manufacturer. There is actually one more uh, 
uh, question to this. Uh, that is why actually three. The Banshee says the ability to install whichever app I want. I mean, it's my phone. I have paid for it. Uh, in Samsung phones, you cannot install Samsung Pay, Samsung Calendar. Why is that? Uh, so yeah, uh, two questions. A very very valid questions uh, again, Srinivas and uh, uh, Debash. Uh, I completely. Uh, agree with you guys uh, brands okay they are installing if you're going for a particular brand they install a lot of their own software but as you have said you have paid for the hardware it's not subsidized or something uh, so actually uh, you should have the right to uninstall uh, some of the softwares that you use for example let's say you might not use samsung pay or something yes the brand should allow you to actually uninstall it and yes regarding the bloatware it's pathetic they uh, generally most of the brands are allowing you to uninstall most of the bloatware but there are some apps that are not allowed to be uninstalled you can just disable it but you cannot uninstall it so i think so this is also something that manufacturers should actually allow because a consumer has bought the device and he has the right to what is there on his smartphone and what is not there on his smartphone so again uh, i hope brands listen to this feedback because this bloatware thing and stuff again in the past two years is plaguing the industry uh, again i would say this has improved a little bit from earlier uh, the some of the bloat we are not getting total shady bloatware but every bloatware or some of the apps that are a brand might think okay this app is necessary uh, if it's not critical to the os i'll have the user to uninstall if it doesn't want it so i feel uh, they could do it Okay, uh, this is the last uh, question and this is by Rohit. Again, um, very interesting. Uh, some things can be done, but I don't think so. Everything can be done, but let's uh, talk about this. Rohit says uh, that I have to log into every app again on a new phone while backing up data on the old phone. Is there an option that says log in automatically on a new phone? Yes or no? That would save a ton of time and effort and more impor importantly, a better user experience. I completely agree with you, Rohit. And I face this almost every week because I have to test new smartphones and I always do my testing with my primary SIM. So I have to keep changing uh, the phones every week or seven, eight days uh, and I have to install uh, the apps. Luckily, installation of the app with uh, Google uh, is very easy transferring. But yeah, I do agree, Rohit, that for almost 90% of the apps, you will have to actually again enter the username and password. And I get your point that uh, a backup in a way that auto restores everything about uh, the logins and everything but i think so here this will not be possible directly by uh, google because a privacy and uh, user data stuff uh, clash comes into this if you as google backs up everything even the usernames and everything okay they have all the data of your all the apps and stuff how many users are willing to uh, share that data so i don't think so that will happen i would love a uh, uh, simple thing like this to happen but i don't think so this will happen there is a way that this can be done for example let users actually install what do you say uh, password managers on these smartphones and uh, these password managers actually can uh, do actually save the user logins and all these things so i feel you can use a password manager to do this yes it's not a straightforward solution uh, but again as i've told you a lot of privacy and security issues might be there uh, if one particular vendor let's say google or something is controlling all your logins would you like that to happen personally i would not like that to happen so anyways, guys, uh, I hope you found this uh, video helpful. And what do you think about some of the stuff? Uh, very interesting and still a perplexing stuff for me is uh, that first question from Mehul uh, regarding uh, UI within the ads. If a uh, user want to disable that, uh, will you be uh, paying a sub uh, willing to pay a subscription fee, let's say 50 or 80 rupees? Again, uh, a very, very interesting question, a perplexing question. And so what do you feel about that? Removing ads on your smartphone for which you have paid do you want to further pay a subscription to disable the ads i would love to know your thoughts about that and uh, again guys a lot of new uh, uh, reviews and stuff coming so stay tuned to the channel and again guys take care catch you later bye bye